Hi all. Our instructive game today will be my game from last night. I'm going to give it the theme French Defence Gambit. So you might want to try this gambit out against the French Defence in your own games. It was a very hard fought draw, but I believe I did get some interesting opportunities as a result of the gambit played. So I was playing white against Andrew Stone, playing at home at Barnet. On two occasions before when I played Andrew, he's beaten me, so he is a tough opponent, ECF about 193, uh, very experienced, he's been you know, over 190 for years, or around that sort of rating. So this is the gambit, I play this B3 and Bishop B2, just allowing black to take on E4, uh, so Knight C3, after Knight F6. Um, I was basically inspired actually to play this because I witnessed a, a demolition job uh, a few days ago when, when in my Muswell Hill match... Um, what one of our team had, had destroyed someone with this this gambit, uh, g4 now, and it poses the question, you know, what is black going to do about white playing bishop g2, and then picking up that e pawn, you know, especially if g5 to this lodge that night on f6. So he played actually h6, and I just played bishop g2, and then he simply played bishop e7. Now I don't want to release the tension in the position here by playing knight takes e4. I didn't think that was uh, very good. For example, you know, just taking and then bishop f6, and I didn't want my, you know, dark squares, you know, weakened, or to exchange off th these bishops. So, to try and keep the tension going, I just played another aggressive move, I just played h4, so things are really sharpening up quite quickly. He played now e5, and after g5, there's some interesting variations now to look at. For example, well, he played knight d5, but say he had played bishop g4, well, first of all, there's a queen sack to consider, g takes... Bishop takes, f takes e7, queen takes. So I've got three pieces for the queen. Um, so let's say I do rook takes d1. But I had to consider that maybe you know f5 here and, and black would be doing okay. In fact, Ruka does like black here. But um, while my opponent was thinking, I did actually think there was a, maybe a stronger alternative after bishop g4, which is actually just f3 here. So leaving temporarily two pieces and pre his knight on f6 and the bishop on g4 because if he does e takes then bishop takes f3 and all of a sudden you know b7 is going to be a tactical vulnerability so what, what does he play here if he does bishop takes f3 this this would be quite bad potentially so my queen's hitting b7 and again he has to do something about the knight on f6 and yeah apparently yeah Ribka likes this it's, it's better for white so say e4 knight takes knight takes queen takes e4 White's doing fine. If black has to play something like king at f8, this can't be very good for black. So basically, he was right to do something else. So he played knight d5. So the knight's coming in quite menacingly to that weakness, that f4 square. And, you know, he's almost equalised, unfortunately. But after knight takes e4, so knight f4, how do I keep my chances um, going? I, I do want to potentially castle queenside and play even d4 later. So what I do is queen f3. And after knight c6, I play knight e2 because I don't want to castle yet because of knight d4. And if my queen like moves to g3, then knight e2 check is embarrassing. So I wanted to keep control of this d4 square. He plays now knight e6, which I think is quite a passive retreat. Maybe he should have um, done something else like hg or knight takes e2. So this, after this, I was you know very happy with my position at the opening. And uh, Ripken likes this, so so maybe you know this is an interesting gambit, you know, against the French defence. I I castle queenside, and now he plays h5. So one of the ideas um, is to later play bishop g4 to try and skewer my queen against the rook. But actually, I let this occur. I was considering two main moves here: queen g3 or c3. Queen g3 has the point that it's difficult for Black to you know keep control of e5. And, you know, if he does, um, for example, let's have a quick look. If he does, say, bishop d6 here, not a5, let's have a quick look at this. Then knight takes d6, and if queen takes, then bishop takes c6. And he's, you know, black's losing this, potentially, because this is horrible. So, queen g3 is, is worth looking at, but the, the, the scarier method for black is just to play a5 here, and just try and lure out this bishop, this defensive bishop, and try and hack my king. So if I try and win a pawn, it, it's not going to be that, that great. Uh, so th this this is um, worse. So really, I considered actually c3 and d4 to be the superior plan. Um, but he just plays knight f4, so he's creating this threat of bishop g4. 
But I thought, yeah, let's just sack the exchange here for a pawn because I'm getting in my um, my plan of, of d4. And these bishops, you know, are going to be quite strong later on. And he hasn't got uh, an opposing light squared bishop. So hopefully I'm, I'm going to gain some pressure. And also, where is he going to castle? He can't easily castle queenside with, say, queen d7 and castle, because I can always threaten to play bishop h3, for example, queen e3 threatening bishop h3. So actually, he castles on the king side. And, you know, do I want to attack his h-pawn immediately? I thought if I attack it immediately, then knight e5. So queen f3, you know, knight e5, didn't want to allow that. So basically, what I do first is actually just play after castles d4. And he now plays f5, so he's sharpening things up. Do I want to take the pawn or leave it? Well, actually, there's an even stronger thing than what I played, apparently, knight c5 which kind of exploits the light square bishop straight away, threatening things like knight takes b7 and the bishop takes c6. And here, if he takes here, and now the queen is forced to lose control of that d5, so I can play bishop d5. Now this position apparently is, is very good for white, because g6, and now the threat is actually c4 and queen h6, so these bishops are really operating well in this variation. And perhaps this is what I should have played. Um, what I did do, though, is just retreat the knight, because I, I thought if later I can play c4 and d5, I, I will have these threats, even if he, he has the opportunity to play g6. So after bishop d6, queen f3, he plays g6. So these these pawns are also dangerous, you know, gripping these dark squares. So if I can just align, you know, the bishop and queen, you know, against this king, then surely this is going to be dangerous. So this actually happened now, this alignments. After king b1, I didn't want to allow him in, in some variations um, any bishop e5s with knight b4s. So my, my, I was a bit aware of my king's safety. So after bishop f8, now d5, knight e5, now queen c3. So I've got my ideal arrangement of this battery of bishop and queen. And potentially there's also you know, this bishop coming into the attack. In fact, after a5, I, I want to get rid of his threat of bishop b4. So I play a3 here, but maybe c5 is even stronger to be able to play d6, or even just d6 here immediately, trying to get access to the d5 square. I played a bit of a passive move. I played a3. I think objectively d6 might be the strongest, but um, a3 I lose a bit of time. So after knight f7, but now I play d6 anyway, it's still quite strong here. So he takes the pawn and I take on b7. Because if I play bishop d5 immediately, he's got rook e6. So I might as well just take the pawn first and then play bishop d5. So he plays now rook e6 because I'm threatening queen h8, mate. So this is quite annoying. So rook e6. And here I go slightly wrong again. Maybe, you know, the engine suggestion is knight f3 to be able to... Um, or sorry, bishop takes e6 and knight f3 to be able to play rook e1 and invade at some point with the rook, either on the 8th rank or, or just rook e6. So I'd missed this subtlety, and I was actually more concerned about the possibility of c6 and him supporting a bishop g7 with his rook on a7 in some lines. So I wanted to chase the knight, uh, sorry, the rook, but it goes to a better square. He's supporting his other rook. And worst of all, he can start to arrange to sacrifice the exchange back. So after c5, queen c3, he plays queen f4. So not only he's using his queen aggressively, that queen's now vacated d6, so he can think about sacking the exchange back. So I'm losing my bishop here now, and you know I've only got a minimal advantage. But you know, after all that, I am actually technically a pawn up here. But he's got a lot of dangerous activity after rook e2. You know, maybe rook takes b2 and bishop g7. So I want to defend my my seventh rank, and I I give back a pawn. So we're equal on pawns now. But I thought this was going to be strong. This knight f3 idea. Um, I was hoping for like queen f4, then queen f6, and this is really dangerous on his g6 pawn. But he plays actually a very good move. Queen e4. So after queen f6, he plays f4. And, you know, this is another fight from this position. So I play knight d2, and he starts um, mopping up some of my pawns. He takes the pawn on g5. So I play d6. Again, I'm trying to stir some, some taxes up uh, here. He's running short of time, but um, I'm starting to use a lot of time now as well. Objectively, he's, he's equal, but, um, you know, he's got some king safety issues. And here, maybe, you know, just check and, and d7 is strong. But I play knight c4, because I want to blockade his c-pawn to stop any c4s. And potentially, you know, maybe win a5, or, or just support my d6, my passed pawn. 
After knight f7, though, it, the, the game goes a bit wild now. He, he wins my d6 pawn, and my checks are a bit harmless. So I haven't really got anything concrete. And at some point here, he offers a draw, which I turn down. So just offer him a draw a few moves later, especially after he's played this c4 move. He's exposing my king a little bit. And once he arranges this queen f7, after queen d3 check, I offer the draw. And I believe he's better here. But the clock situation, I only had like five minutes left, and he had three and a half minutes left. And so... um. He, he accepted my draw offer. But um, an exciting hard-fought draw. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.